Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory Update 5, and on this episode we're diving into even more of the Tier 8 Milestones, Leading Edge Productions, and the first thing that we're going to be focusing on is diving into the Fused Modular Frame. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into it. Okay, so the fused modular frame is the first process that we've got to get building to be able to unlock our leading edge production. Now, this is done from a blender. So I have placed a blender down here just so that we can have a look at what's required for being able to make that. And if we load it up here. It is 1.5 heavy modular frames, 75 per minute of the aluminum casing and then 37.5 per minute nitrogen gas. So that means we've got to get nitrogen gas over to our base at some point. Well, I have gone and done a little bit of exploring because as you can see here, I did build my Explorer and I was able to find a pathway that led to, I think it's like 1.4 kilometers that way. Uh, some nitrogen gas. There's a nitrogen gas well that's there that we're going to be able to set up our well extractors on and um, try to get some natural gas this way, some of the nitrogen. So that's what we're going to be working on right now is setting up our nitrogen gas extraction and then piping that gas all the way back here to our base so that we can work with it. Okay, so we've located our resource well right here. This is a nitrogen gas well, and it's got these little like node pockets that are kind of spread out around. And the first thing we have to do is we have to, if we open up our little customizer here and scroll down to, uh, sorry, the builder, and we select resource well pressurizer. So basically what this is, is like a big fracker that then pressurizes these little outer nodes to be able to release the uh, the items that are in there or the gas or fluid or whatever it is so that it can be transported back. So we're going to mount this up and then this thing requires power. And let's power this up so we can have a good look at what happens here when we get this all switched on here. And as you can see, this thing, it's got a little bit of an animation to it. Kind of looks similar to the uh, the space elevator. And then if we watch now these little nodes, when it hits, they all shoot and geyser out. And now these wells are pressurized so that we can get the items out of there or get the, the, the nitrogen gas out of there. So now we would have to go and we would place these resource well extractors. And I'm actually going to spin these around like so, so that they're kind of facing each other because we'll just connect some pipes in between these. And then there's this one over here. We're gonna slap down just like so. And then we can connect these up with a pipe. Now, if we look at these, they are, because we're on a pure node here, this is 120 cubic meters of nitrogen per minute that's coming out of this nitrogen gas. Same with this one. All of these are going to end up producing because we're on a pure node here. So these will be able to produce way more nitrogen than we're going to need. But we're going to need nitrogen for other things as well, too. So to have this all here and available to us, I don't think it's really that crazy um, to have this much nitrogen gas to start off with. Now, we're only going to be using 37 meters worth of this. So... Uh, it's not going to be a huge amount, 37.5 cubic meters, I think is what it is. So, but we're going to grab some of the copper pipes. And actually, because we've got so much here, I want to make sure that I'm actually using the Mark II pipes for this. And I don't want to mix these pipes at all. So we're going to click here and we're going to click over to that one. That's connected. And then we're going to throw a splitter in here right about there. And then we will start to actually bring this gas line up out of here. 
by just connecting here. And I, I'm just going to place the first one right here. And then we can expand this up along as we kind of go here. And we've got this path all the way. The one thing I do need to double check, though, is now I believe gas behaves differently than fluid. But I want to make sure that this is going to end up with everything back to our base. So we've just basically got to keep an eye on our head lift. I believe head lift doesn't affect gas, but I could be completely wrong with that. We'll know as we get more pipe up this way, because we're going to be well over the 10 meters of what this is capable of pressurizing. Um, so we'll be able to find out whether or not head lift will contribute. I'm going to get a bunch more of these resource wells hooked up though, and start working at getting this brought back. So as we're building along here, it does look as though head lift really is not a contributing factor. So, because uh, we've gone all the way up to the almost very nearly the highest point that we bring this pipeline up here. And uh, there's something like one more little like four meter lip that we climb up over there. And we're still getting full pressure here. So I'm, I'm not at all worried about head lift with this. And it's nitrogen gas that we're needing. It's not any liquid form. So um, we're going to be totally fine with what we've got set up here. And then if we look down at the bottom down here, you can't really tell. But there's actually still two more uh, of the little wells that are available to us that we could bring up another 240 gas if we needed but we're, we're gonna start working with this 600 line here and then we'll split it off and do with it as we need as we work on our production line all right we have successfully brought our nitrogen gas line down from our nitrogen well and that is all down here at our factory and then we got this nice little area here that we will work at getting our used modular frame set up here so we're going to set up our blender here we'll pipe in our gas into it and then we'll work at getting our other components fed into this unit so that we can get this up and running all right we have installed our blender we have our nitrogen gas line coming in here and i did let me just get back on the ground here i threw a valve on here and i did limit its flow at 38.3 cubic meters that's the closest i could get it to 37.5 because that's all the blender needs is 37.5 cubic meters and we're we're solid there it's not going over at all or not going under at all and that leaves the rest of this nitrogen available for any future development that we're going to do with it I then uh, threw a splitter over here on our aluminum pacing that's coming through. That's being fed down here on this conveyor belt and fed into the blender. And then we did the, another little spaghetti line here of conveyor coming over from the far side, bringing our heavy modular frames. That's all flowing down this way. And then an elevator to drop it down here. And it's feeding in. So now... This is manufacturing our 1.5 used modular frames per minute. And we have three of them so far. So yay, it's up and running. Now it's a matter of this stockpiling enough so that we can then turn in our milestone. And you know what this milestone is going to get us? It's going to get us the Mark III Miner. That's going to massively... That's. That's going to open up so many doors for us to be able to get so many more products because we'll have just like nearly unlimited resources at our fingertips uh, with being able to use that. In fact, the Mark III Miner, it mines so much that if you overclock it all the way, it will, it produces more product than what a Mark V conveyor belt is capable of hauling out. So. Uh, let's just wait here now as we get some of this stockpiled up and then we'll go turn in and get that milestone unlocked. All right, so I have left my fused modular frames to produce overnight and we have more than enough now to be able to step out this milestone. Let's head over. We've got our, first we're gonna gather up the other components that I've kind of set aside for it here, which is a whole bunch of steel pipes, some supercomputers, and then the heavy modular or the fused modular frames we're coming over leading edge technology or leading edge productions select that okay we've got our 50 fused modular frames we've got 100 supercomputers and we've got a thousand of the steel pipe that is ready to go and launched 
Let's go into our Milestone production reached. now. Turbo motors can now be constructed in order to build the latest fix-it improved factory buildings, such as the Miner Mark III. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. So we now have the Mark III miners, and under normal mode, they are capable of doing 240 resources per minute. So that means with the pure node, we're going to be upwards around that 480 items per minute. And then if you overclock those, if you were to throw in three power shards, that would actually get you up to 1,200 items per minute. Now, under our current situation with our, our conveyor belts, the fastest conveyor belt, belt that's available is the Mark V, and that's only capable of doing 780 items per minute. So at this point, if we were to like completely max out a Mark III miner, there's not enough. We can't, we can't haul all that material away. So we are going to be capped at that 780 point for being able to get materials out of the ground. But with that said, that's going to be massive improvements everywhere out here. We're going to be able to ramp up productions on our iron, our steel productions, our copper productions, anything and everything because we can upgrade all of those miners now. Our coal, we'll be able to get more coal out of our nodes that's available. It's just everything can step up. And at some point, I will go through and do like a massive expansion everywhere on everything. But I think we might get a little bit closer to nuclear power for that because we're going to need a ton of power to be able to ramp up all of our factories to where we want them to be. So what's next in our chain of things that we need to build? Okay, so we have particle enrichment is our last tier to our last milestone to unlock. And from there, we need to do electromagnetic control rods. We have to do cooling systems. We have to do fused modular frames. And we have to do tur turbo motors. And the turbo motors are also needed for being able to do our Mark III miners. So let's just throw down, um, I'm gonna guess it's probably maybe a blender. We'll have a look at our production lines here and see. It's either going to be a blender or a manufacturer that we need. We'll start with the blender first because, of course, it's one of the newer machines and it's advancing our technologies. So here is where the cooling system comes into play. So that is something that we're going to need to manufacture. So let's have a look now at an actual manufacturer. Let's slap that down here real quick and have a look where are our turbo motors turbo motors are right here turbo motors require the cooling system so we're going to have to build the cooling system first to get to turbo motors radio control units we've already got that and motors we've got that and rubber we've got that so we're doing everything here but the cooling system so it looks like under our blender technology the cooling system is where we got to start so what does a cooling system require to be able to be made well, it needs heat sinks. We need to make heat sinks and we need to make rubber or rubber we've already got. It also takes water and also takes nitrogen gas. Well, fortunately, we've got nitrogen gas sitting right over there. That's not a problem. We've got a lake right beside us. That's not a problem. So we're going to be close to being able to get that done. The heat sinks we are going to have to see what it takes to make those heat sinks then okay so now i've thrown down a assembler here and let's have a look at this this is where we find heat sinks and heat sinks are going to require alcad aluminum sheeting and copper sheeting as well okay so this we can go do over at our aluminum plant let's head over to our aluminum plant right now and with the art of of instant teleport Poof, we're now over at our aluminum manufacturing area. Gotta love the uh, the joys of video editing to cut up at the travel time to get over here. So basically, we need to take a line from the Alcat aluminum sheeting that's over here, and um, we'll split off some of our copper that's over here, because we've got lots of copper that's here, and we'll manufacture some copper plating, and then we can build up those heat sinks here, and then we'll convey those heat sinks back all the way back over to our main factory to be able to get our assembler built to be able to make the cooling systems. So there's a number of steps that we've got to do on this. It's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a process. So 
the only thing I can do is, is get started at building. Okay, so we've had to do a bit of work to be able to get this all set up to make sure that we have enough of the products actually going. And first thing I had to do is I had to double up our Alclad aluminum sheeting production. So I now have two assemblers that are combining copper ingots and the aluminum ingots. They're moving into this merger and going into this storage unit. Then the Alcat aluminum sheeting is then getting fed into these two assemblers over here, getting combined for the heat sinks. Then we took our additional copper. We, we had a bunch of extra copper over here because of we had a normal copper node coming in. It was all getting smelt into copper ingots. And then we have it getting split off and it's shooting into these five constructors over here to make a bunch of copper sheeting because we needed the copper sheeting now to come over here for being able to make the heat sinks. So we now have all of the copper sheeting that we need and all of the alkyd aluminum sheeting needed to be able to make those heat sinks. And I ended up having to overclock, I believe it was just this one here to get us up to the 75 alkyd aluminum sheets that we're gonna need to be able to make this run. So. That is all producing, and everything should be running at 100% here. Now, I do have the heat sinks just coming out to this conveyor line here. Now we've got to build the conveyor system to get it all the way back to our base so that we can work on our next step. All right, so the next little bit of manufacturing has been completed. We brought the heat sinks all the way over from our aluminum manufacturing down to just below our main factory here as well as we brought our nitrogen gas down here we have placed down a blender and we are pumping in 150 nitrogen gas per minute coming into here as well as 30 per minute water well actually it's just one water pump that's dumping straight into it so we've got plenty of water we'll never run out of that and then we have a rubber feed coming in all the way over from our rubber storage over that way via conveyor system down here to feed in. And then we have our heat sinks that are feeding into here. And this is now manufacturing our cooling systems. So this is one step closer to that turbo motor, which is next on our things of, of manufacturing that we have to do. This was quite the process to be able to get all of this stuff down here to get to the point where we can start manufacturing the turbo motors, which then gives us the Mark III miners. So that's what we're gonna work on next here is expanding this into the manufacturer for being able to make those turbo motors. All right, so I have thrown a manufacturer down here and let's just see what all it's gonna to take to actually get the turbo motor manufactured. First things first is the cooling systems. Okay, I have that. It's coming out of here. We will be able to take it from here and put it into there. That's not going to be an issue. What else are we going to need? We need radio controlled units. Well, they're just over there. That's that's doable. Motors. Well, I've got storage of them up over there. The big issue is going to be actually conveying all that stuff over here. To get it into this is going to be the biggest problematic part of the whole thing. And then some more rubber. Well, the rubber's no problem because it is right here. I drop a splitter in here, feed it in, and we're done deal. Because I brought 60 over here per minute. This is only using 12 per minute. So we've got 48 per minute left over here. Well, this is only going to require 45. So we're, we're totally golden with what we need here for rubber. And then, of course, we have our cooling unit, our cooling system here as well, too. So it's just a matter of getting the motors over here and the radio controlled units over to here. That's what we're going to work on right now. Our manufacturer has just fired up. Okay, we are bringing our cooling systems out of this blender. It's feeding conveyor into the first channel on the manufacturer. Then from our motors, I'm running a conveyor belt all the way over here, down, and into an elevator, and in. So that's providing our, motor, our motors. Then the radio control units are just being conveyed over from its storage over there, coming down and feeding in. And then we did throw in a splitter right here off of the rubber line that we had already brought over 
and that's getting fed into here. So this will make 1.875 turbo motors per minute. I might be just shy of the 7.5 coolers. I might be more closer to the six range. I would actually have to go back and, and kind of see what this is doing over here as far as our heat sinks. If we're getting, you know what? I think we're doing okay for the heat sinks. We might actually be, oh yeah, because we're only coming out at six. This is this is capped out at six. I would need to probably overclock this a bit. Let's see what it would take to get this up to 7.5 output here. Let's just bump that up. 7.5 is right about there. Okay, so we're still good for nitrogen. Uh, we had plenty of nitrogen. We're still good for the water. Rubber is now up to 15 rubber per minute. And this is using how much? This is using 45. We're still in range on the rubber because we have a line of 60 coming over here. We're good that way. And then the heat sinks, we're up to 15 per minute, which is exactly how many heat sinks we have being manufactured over at the other end. And we have that running at 100%. So this right now is actually running perfectly 100% at 1.875 turbo meters or turbo motors per minute. So now it's a matter of these just stockpiling so that we can turn in the milestone but I think there's still more that we've got to build for this milestone because we've got the fused modular frames and now we have the turbo motors. Let's go back over to the hub and see what's next we need to build. Okay, we have got back to the hub. We're loading up particle enrichment. So we have the middle two. Oh, wait, we actually have, we have the cooling systems done. We have the turbo motors done. We have the fused modular frames done. The only thing else is the electromagnetic control rod. Now there is a little snafu here. And that is right in this location here. We are using 100% of our cooling systems going into our two turbo motors. We might want to split that off and maybe lower our efficiency on this so that we can keep some of these or we build another production line but basically duplicate everything that we've just done out there so that we can double our production of the cooling systems which means we would need probably another box because i gotta see I, i'm gonna have to sit down and do some calculations and see where we're at for our aluminum ingot consumption uh, to see if there's some room there, a wiggle room for us to be able to make another one of those production lines. Okay, I have come over to the aluminum manufacturing location over here, and I was doing some mathematics on how many ingots we are actually consuming in this. And everything that we're consuming for our manufacturing here right now, we can make 240. Okay, 240 ingots are getting manufactured right now. 90 of them are getting used by making our aluminum casing. And then we're using 45 on this one and 30 on this one, which, okay, that's 90, 45 and 30, that's another 75. So we're at like what, 165, something like that. So 240 minus 165 is 35 and 40 is another 75. Well, what are we using right here? Well, that's 75 ink. It's getting used right here. So we have enough aluminum here that we could double this and put overclock this one to use 45 to make 45 of these per minute, which is going to be 45 aluminum sheeting. This just hasn't updated yet because I haven't powered it up. And then this one is going to use 30. Okay. So we've got the aluminum. We don't have the copper, which means I need to bring another copper line in here. Smelt up all that copper, turn it into ingots, 
and basically do a whole nother, you know, split off here. This, some of this is getting used by um, the Alclad aluminum sheeting. And then the rest of it will have to go into copper sheeting. So we need another normal node of copper to be able to duplicate everything that we've just done down there. Well, I think that's doable. I think we can go out and try to find another node around here. In fact, if we do a little search out here, we're looking for some copper. Let's see, let's see kind of what we find here and if it's really, really crazy far away. Okay, that's the one at our main manufacturing. That's the one we're pulling from now. And there is another one that's way over that way. So we're going to go find this one and we're going to bring this one back here to be able to build this and double up this production line. So what better way to go find some copper is we head out on the Explorer, leaving our base, and we are going to go on a little bit of a walkabout here to find our copper. All right, I have found that other copper node and I have brought it over here. Turns out that that copper node was actually a pure copper node, so it's 240 items per minute that are coming down here. So that's getting fed in. Half of it, I've got it going into these smelters, getting turned into ingots, and then it's just dumping into an awesome sink. The other half is getting loaded into, sorry, there was an auto save there. Uh, gets loaded into these smelters that are then fed up here. Some of it is going into making our Alcat aluminum sheeting. And then the rest of it is getting filtered down here and all getting constructed into copper sheeting. That copper sheeting is all getting dumped and split into these two units, which is taking our Alcad, Alclad aluminum sheeting and the copper sheeting, combining them to double our heat sink production. So now we are sitting at 15 heat sinks per minute is what we are manufacturing here, which means we can now double up at our other end. You want to move around quick in this game, sprint on Mark V conveyors. You can really fly around here on these things. It'd be that perfect little walkways for sure. All right, so I pop back over here and we have doubled up our cooler system production. So I've switched it over and I've uh, put two blenders in here now. We've split the nitrogen line. It's coming down and feeding in both of these. The water is feeding into both of these. And then any of the extra heat sinks are getting dumped into the awesome sink that I currently do not have powered up. So let's get that fixed here real quick. Let's just throw a power pole up here and then connect that up. So the awesome sink is now running. That's going to get us a bunch more tickets. The heat sinks should actually bring down that number pretty quick, I would think, because uh, I imagine they're worth a worth a pretty good chunks of uh, points towards awesome sink tickets. So. Now we have, um, what is it totally now to? We are getting 12 coolers per minute now out of here. And this only requires 7.5. So any extra now is being dumped into storage here. So we've got storage capability to be able to go and turn in our milestones. And then we have our turbo motors that are coming out and getting dumped into this unit of which things are cooking along quite well now. So we have storage now for our cooling systems and we have storage for our turbo motors which is getting us just that much closer i think the only thing left to do is going to be making the what is it there the electromagnetic rods i think is the what's left let's just shoot over that way and have a quick look at our milestone and kind of see where we're at because I think we're getting really, really close to having this one nailed down. And then we will have completed all of tier eight. So we're at the hub. Let's have a look at it. We have storage cooling systems. We have storage fused modular frames. We have storage for turbo motors. So that is exactly what's left is electromagnetic rods. And what does it take to make electromagnetic rods? It takes, uh, from what I can see here, is it looks like it's rotors and AI limiters. So I actually think 
we have everything to be able to get that done. Let's quickly thrap, slap that. Uh, that's going to be an assembler. Let's just have a look here and see. Our rotor line is going to be one level below where we're at right now. But our AI limiters, I want to say that they're, they're just like stockpiled up here. So to make things simple, I might just <laughs> slap the assembler over here, ring a conveyor over this way for the AI limiters, and then just figure out how to get our rotors over there. Let's see how many of each we have to be able to do for that. Let's slap down an assembler and just kind of see what it looks like. Production assembler. We're just going to slap this right here just so that we can kind of see what's going on. And we are going to select those. Where is it? Here. Electromagnetic control rods. Electromagnetic control rods are six. Oh, sorry. They're stators, not rotors. Six stators and four four AI limiters. Well, that is like next to nothing here. We'll be able to, I'm sure our system will be able to handle that. We're not going to be bogging down on anything. And that's going to make four per minute. I might even just leave this right here. Uh, we'll see. So I did just leave this assembler over here. We just, from the splitter right here, we brought down the AI limiters that we need. And then there was right there we are feeding in our stators. So I just threw a splitter in line on the stators, brought that down around in front here. That's loading into here and the control rods are going in for storage here. I need like 400 of these. So we're just gonna light, leave this logged in for tonight. These will stockpile. And then we need 400 of the cooling units as well. We'll let those go 100 of the motors, which we already have and 200 of the fused modular frames which we already have as well too so now it's just a matter for these two production lines that we just finished let them stockpile and then we'll be able to get that turned in so i'm going to let this run overnight and when i come back everything will be stockpiled and we'll turn in this last milestone so one thing i wanted to quickly go over with uh, all the new construction and stuff that we've done here is power was starting to become a little bit of an issue again so if we look at our power consumption we're doing okay now, but that's because I went and upgraded a lot of our power. So I have dropped in some of the geothermal power units. They're sitting over top here on some geysers. And I think, so I've got two here. And I want to say I have two more, one more for sure, kind of way off in the distance off of why I think it's close to my quartz node, or it could be a, pretty sure it's a quartz node or a sulfur node coming from that far direction over there. So we've got a few of these up and running. And then we also went along and we popped over to our oil refinery area and we took, there was that one node over here. There was a normal node of oil that I ended up firing that bad boy up and we fed it into a couple of refineries and it's going straight into making fuel for us and then it's powering these generators we got what one two three four five six seven generators that we fired up here um, that it's able to support that's adding more power for us and then of course these refineries as a byproduct are also producing the resin and I have the resin just getting dumped into an awesome sink just so that the system doesn't back up at all but that's increased our power right there as well too. So that's got us up to um, like six and a half gigawatts of power. Of course it fluctuates like this due to flow, right? So like it's never a consistent 100%, you know, 600 flow or whatever flow per unit here. I think it's two or 120 uh, from the normal nodes, 240 from the uh, pure nodes. So we're getting what we can out of it and we're getting the best power we can out of that. But fortunately, we're getting to a point where nuclear power is going to become possible here in our future. Like there's lots of things that are coming in line uh, that will be able to to open that up for us. So, um, but I, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you that there was a little bit more that needed to get done kind of behind the scenes in this episode, uh, just to kind of keep everything running as far as making sure our power was up to par. So. Now we're going back and we're waiting for the rest of those items for the 
uh, the coolers and the electro control rods, electromagnetic control rods, waiting for those to, to finish building up for us so that we can turn in that last milestone. All right, so we have let everything kind of run overnight here, and we've got more than enough electromagnetic control rods. We've gathered up our cooling systems. We're heading into our tier eight to actually get this completed. This is our final milestone, which is particle enrichment. And we just got to load everything into the hub here so that we can send it on its way. So 400 of the electromagnetic control rods, 400 of the cooling systems, 200 of the fused modular frames, and finally 100 of the turbo motors. Launch away. We have completed tier eight. Milestone reached. The particle accelerator enables previously impossible processes such as recycling nuclear waste and converting it into plutonium as well as the generation of exotic matter. A new project part enables progress to the next phase. And now we are set to get the next phase of the elevator done, which is, I mean, that's going to be a project in itself. Um, but the other thing that we've got to do now that we have our Mark III, con our Mark III miners and our Mark V conveyors is it's time to plan and build a mega base. Like I'm, I'm thinking like overclocking all of the miners to get as much of the product in as we can and just make something absolutely ridiculous out of all this and then slowly start tweaking towards building a nuclear processing facility to be able to get some nuclear power but i mean we have come so far in what are we on our 17th episode here in getting all of the tiers unlocked and progressing through this game and i mean just take take a moment to kind of take a snapshot of of this absolute mess of everything that's here to get to the point where we've got our blenders we've got our turbo motors we've got our steel construction through here and computers and copper manufacturing. We've got aluminum and coal generated power over there. We've got fuel, oil refinement and plastics and rubber. What we've done has just been absolutely amazing so far in such a short period of time. So if you could reach down, hit that like button on the video. It really does help the channel uh, for every like that happens out there. Also hop into the comment section Send me your comments as to uh, your thoughts on our first playthrough through the game so far. And then, um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, throw a subscribe out there. Ring that notification bell so you can be notified when we have a new episode go live. And uh, follow me on social media because I post over there when I released a new episode as well. Because YouTube notifications can be a little bit sketch. So, at TerraceDWDC on Instagram and on Twitter. With that said, you guys have a good one, and we'll see you in the next episode.